Welcome back to iHeartRadio So Bad It's Good. Today, this is truly a so good it's great moment. Uh, I have talked about her for the last two seasons of what I consider to be the number one. It is the number one show on Bravo. It is also the most heart palpitating, contentious, sometimes just bizarre show I've ever seen in my life. But she always manages to hold her head up high. And there's grace involved. And at the same time, I still feel like I don't know everything about her, which means I want more. She's not only the first Asian American cast member on this show, but she also has her own line of, uh, uh, she has a coconut water empire with her brother, Jeffrey, uh, which we'll talk about as well. But I just got to say, Crystal Kong Minkoff, congratulations for getting through the season. Thank you. Um, I feel <laughs> like I have some wounds and scars. Yeah, how are you, how are you healing up? Are you, uh, how, how's your nervous system? Um, it feels better now that it's not airing. So yeah, like, yeah, it's really hard. I mean, I was telling Rob the other day, I'm like, remember two years ago when like life was really good and happy. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's like, it's hard to remember, but like, it's sort of like in a distant memory, but well, Rob, yeah, Rob's great weird. because I always, I always compare you guys to like, not the every man, because there's definitely, you know, but there is something of like the Jim Halpert from the office where we see the throws, the show sometimes through your eyes, you know, like where, show. But, but like, we'll see, we'll see it through your reactions or something of like, Hey, this is actually what's going on, or this is how, and I don't mean like a younger set feels, but there is something of like, I mean, is it hard in scene sometimes to not like laugh or to not be like, yeah. oh my God. Okay. So I actually think that like, if I come back, I need to not withhold even those reactions. Cause I try to be like <laughs> respectful polite. and yeah. Polite. Yeah, I'm just, like, a polite person. So I'm like, you know, but in reality, I would, my jaw would be on the floor and my eyes, like I would be you know, <laughs> like looking and like what's going on. So that's how I feel internally. So that's something that I'm going to like, just let it go because I do withhold because of, out of politeness. I'm like, oh, if they're well, going to see That's me. how I was raised too. Like I can say all I want on this podcast, but like, or talk tough on Instagram. But in reality, I get like, I met you at BravoCon and I was insanely scared and I, you knew who I was and I got, and I apologized immediately to Crystal, even though I didn't know exactly what I was apologizing for, <laughs> but I did, but you were the nicest person. And that's why I think it's interesting uh, for any kind of rumors. And just to clear this up out of the, there has been no contract offers. There has been no, nothing is in place for this show yet correct nothing is in place for me correct and i yeah, think I, that i i assume that with other people that i've spoken to so yeah are you Thank guys you for saying that it is weird because i think it was hard my first season people were like oh she's yeah. cold and she's this i'm like no I like bubbles like i don't understand but i get it you know i think that now that i'm two years later actually and like you're saying you don't know everything about me but i actually think that would be if you knew everything about me in one season, then it's hard. You, you want to develop people, you know, when you're thinking about just a show on the entertainment side, you know, you want to like, it's like a slow burn, right? So exactly. Like, and that's why and with Garcelle, I mean, Garcelle just finished her third season and I'm like, wow, if you went by the first season, I've said to my show, I'm like, she was okay. But then she really, I feel like came into this insane power in this third season. And that's why it's like, I want to see the same with you. And I know this is just coming from a fan's perspective, you guys, but there is this, you know, I mean, you sure, I'm sure you read this, that you have the Sutton, Garcelle, Crystal, Triumvirate, where is it, does it make you laugh when people are like, they can take down the Fox Force yeah. 5? Like, <laughs> this is a bunch of ladies, this isn't a war, yet that's how we position you ladies? Right. I mean, like, I don't, like, the idea of taking anyone down is really, <laughs> like, sort of the antithesis of who I am. Um, at the same time, I think it's about, um trying to sort of reveal more authenticity from others that might not be there. And so like I think pull it, pull it out of them in a way. Yeah. Yeah. That's a little frustrating, but you know, in, in my sort of other life, which is my real life, like, I don't need to do that with people. Like I wouldn't, I just wouldn't hang out with people who are not being authentic. Right. So yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's the nature of the show. You're cast with people. Um, and I would say only until like halfway through my second season, did I start to feel like genuine um, connections? And I think because that, maybe that's me. I was guarded because I kept comparing it to like my friends, like 
oh, we, we wouldn't do that. Yeah. That makes no sense. You know, and then, and then I remember the producers were like, this is reality. Yeah. To like, I mean, it's interesting to come into a season though. And hopefully with the, the next season, when I really hope you're a part of, it is interesting to come into these things with the thought of, I want to try to be more open this year, or I want to try to do this, or I want to try to highlight this. And I do got to say this real Coco, you guys, we're all talking about Casa del Sol, but where <laughs> is the real Coca conga line? Why are we not seeing, like, I mean, it feels like the Casa del Sol now has got so much, but you actually have this beverage that is sold at Costco, which is my mom's yeah. favorite. It's like me and my mom, when I go to Arizona, our big thing is to go to Costco together. You have like an actual empire that we don't really even get to focus on that much on the show. I mean, you see this Kathy stuff and I know you're good friends with Kathy. Does that ever go like, hey, what, what about an episode around coconut water and, and products? You know, I'm polite. And so <laughs> I'm like, so I see it. I'm like, oh, like, I wish I could do that. At the same time, you know, like I said, like, I do believe in time, whether it's on the show or off, people will discover it, that I'm one of the founders. But um, in truth, like, it's, it's not a new brand. You know, no. we started 11 years ago, we're in actually every single Costco except Texas right now. And that's coming. Boo, so Texas. Wait, what, what's the hold up on Texas? My Texas is like holy, all my Texas listeners. What's going like right to your local Costco? Texas. Please. Yeah. But um, the fact that we are in every other region of America is wild. And um, yeah, we're just really proud of it. It was like, I think that would have been sort of an interesting story had I done the show 10 years ago, right? Like yeah. young kids developing grassroots product um, with not one dollar in marketing. I mean, we really like, we really pushed hard and, and we just did it with a lot of, you know, pain and blood, sweat and tears and we did it. And so, you know, I would, I would have, that would have been a fun story. To Those are the things that I think should be celebrated. I, I told you when I saw you, when I talk about you, it's like, okay, your two kids are already smarter than I am. Yeah, I love, I like your, I love your nanny. You're working out in the backyard during COVID. You know, your husband, I'm a great admirer of and have been. Which, by the way, uh, Rob, if you will tell Rob, I apologize. When I was a kid, I went to New York City with my mom, and I bought it. This is how old I am. I bought a bootleg VHS Lion King because I was so obsessed with the You're Lion a King. Horrible human. I root. No, I know. <laughs> I I didn't realize about piracy back then. I was a kid, so I apologize to your husband. I hope I didn't affect any kind of bottom line but i truly like i've loved slowly learning about your life it's just that there's this weird vortex with housewives sometimes that there is so much other insanity happening yeah. that i feel like real storylines because this is called real housewives and we need to always make the real be in there that gives it the foundation i did an interview and i don't know if we're allowed i will just briefly um i i've battled uh ed my own personal life and you've been brave enough in the last two seasons to be able to mention that but it was kind of weird because I even talked to this girl that had filmed a scene with you, Alyssa Mass, that was that was speaking so highly about you and all of this stuff. And it's like you're putting this work in and then it sometimes doesn't make the show because it's not as sexy as a fight that we didn't get to see in a sprinter van. Does that ever frustrate you as a real person or do you understand it from a TV perspective? I mean, it's it's equal. Yeah. And it really is equal at this point for me. I would say the first season was extremely frustrating um, to see sort of like I would watch with Rob and I'm like, okay, watch this. This is, and then it was gone. And I'm like, well, that, that scene, it would explain everything, everything that I have to deal with two years later that make no sense. And at the same time, so for me, it's, it's painful, but Rob is like, well, it, it's just a show and they're going to cut it where it makes sense enough. Yeah. I'm like, well, I hate you. So go away. <laughs> um, like go you, to your basement, like Rob. Go play with your jukebox right now. Get yeah. Like, yeah. oh, are you in Hollywood? Like, shut your mouth. <laughs> um, but now it's like, I, I think I'm a pretty, like, I, I have a lot of, um, I, I have a lot of coping mechanisms that it might be almost problematic where I, I figure out how to deal with something very easily, but I'm like, Okay, well, you know, I, when I think about the past seasons, people don't remember those, you know, nuanced details. So it's fine. I just sort of move on from it because it can be frustrating and I can't live my life in something that I can't control. And especially so, because you have a real life. I mean, like, the, it does, uh, yeah. it, your life doesn't shut off when the camp, the season ends at the reunion. You still right. go on with your life. Yeah. I mean, but I feel sometimes frustrated. And I think the audience sometimes gets frustrated from a perspective of, um, 
you get rewarded for bad behavior. Like sometimes that is the thing that we want to focus on is this uh, non-existent fight that we can't see or legal issues that we'll never get the answer of. All of these things when I'm like, well, I want to kind of know more a little bit about this story that's really going on that I know affects a lot of women, even men as well. Like I want a little bit more information about that. And I'm not trying to complain about the show. It's just sometimes I feel like that got swept under the rug where at the very end, we see your coda where you're just like, I take it one day at a time. And today is a good day, which I love. But, you know, there's like a huge chunk in between. You know? Sure. Yeah. I mean, so that, I mean, that's just the part of, you know, yeah. like what you say yes to you film it. So, you know, so th- your experience feels more resolved than my, what you might see. Um, but you know, with that story, I mean, anyone who has an ED understands it. Even if you saw that scene, it's still not resolved. You yeah, know, every day. It's every, every day. day. Yeah, every day. Yeah, it's an everyday thing. It's an everyday feeling. So, but, you know, I think that's, um, you know, my goal is yeah. to show that through maybe my own platform. And Regardless if on the show or not, you yeah. will continue to have this platform. And that's why I really kind of became this crystal fan throughout, like, and then especially in the second season, because I just felt like you were this, reli- I have this big concept on the show about reliable narrators. Like I said, the reason why that Aspen Van thing is so hard to understand because, you know, and, and you don't have to comment on this, but Lisa has been proven to me to be an unreliable narrator. So it's hard to like believe, even if she's telling the truth. But mm-hmm. I said, if Crystal was in that van and Crystal told me that story about Kathy, I would 1000% believe it because Crystal has proven to be a reliable narrator. And I think these are really important things on the show, but I think that's just such a credit to who you are as a person. And that's why the show needs you is because we need those people that actually can pull both sides or try to understand both sides. Um, we also, I give you huge credit. Um, you know, you had a contentious relationship in the first season with my future wife, Sutton Strack. And we have seen, um, <laughs> she, she, she's like, ah, we, we have seen, uh, it was really kind of refreshing to see you guys go to that baseball game and you guys kind of mend fences in this, what seems to be natural way. And I don't think it was for the cameras was your mending fences with Sutton. Is that, is that real and true? And have you grown to really like her? Your wife? Yeah. Um, (laughs) let's talk about in bed all night, but, uh, like, you know, at the show, I think there's a pressure and also not necessarily like a lot of support to mend, you know, as you can see from the others, they don't want to, they don't want to see you mending. So, you know, during, um, when we're not Uh, filming, which is a lot, a long time, it's eight months, uh, there's a lot of opportunity and, you know, she and I decided to get together and, you know, when you first start it after so much conflict, it feels like you're faking it, right? Like let's get together. And, but then we really, we've really developed a friendship and it's nice to spend time without cameras, without the cast around that, um, you can have real conversations that like are not affected by storyline or, um, anyone that has their other, you know, ulterior motives on your own behalf. So you were able to do that. And we actually, we've spent a lot of time having lunch with her tomorrow. I know you mentioned you're having lunch with her tomorrow. (laughs) Now here's the deal. I don't know. I I blew it so bad with Sutton at BravoCon. You did? Oh, dude. I, I, one of my listeners bought me one of her handbags so I could like meet her in person. And it was that Friday I just got in there. Yeah. And so I get up there and I'm just, I'm a sweaty mess. Like I'm just swelling and uh, somebody's filming it for me. And I was going to do a funny photo where I got down on my knee and proposed to her. But okay. then I was like, I think I mumbled. I was like, I'm so bad. Let's go to Ryan Bailey. I, or either she knows who I am and hates me, or I was just a big sweaty mess. And okay. so I didn't do the pose thing. I just do that. And I closed my eyes in the photo accidentally. So the photo is so horrible and she knows, I mean, unfortunately, so as so many people have tagged her in her post because it has been an ongoing thing. Cause I think I'm better than Sanjit. I think I'm better. I'm not a cat guy, but I could learn to be a cat guy. And this is your interview. I'm just saying, if my name happens to come up at the lunch, say a positive word about, okay, well, I have, my. I I don't need her money. I have a Toyota Corolla. I that's like paid off. So that's not even a thing. Mine's not, my car's not paid off. <laughs> See, wow, look at me. Okay, so anyways, just put in a good word for me if you could. I will. Um, I think the cat thing is important. No, I, I actually I will. told her not to wear a cat sweater tomorrow. I, I insisted on it. <laughs> she, and I, then she stopped texting me. 
She just stopped. I, I bought three cat sweaters ever since oh, she okay, said okay. she liked a cat sweater. And I, yeah. okay. So, yeah. um, but back to you, uh, this season was very contentious. When you do, you said you watched it back with Rob sometimes. Do you watch every episode and how much I, I have always this theory of, the unfortunate thing sometimes about these reality shows in the day and age of social media is that we have a show on top of a show. So you have the actual show and then you have all of the social media that goes with the show, not only between you guys, which I feel like not you in particular, but I'm like, why is this not being reined in from the actual cast members of like going at each other? I don't know if that's encouraged, but then all of our fan theories and all of the conspiracy theories, how, I mean, do you watch the show every week? So first season I did. And when I think back on it now, I'm like, God, that wasn't even a big deal. Oh, <laughs> so painful, painful. Um, and like, I was, I went to college as a pre-med student. My, my plan was medical school. Like I, this was not my path at all, at all. So just seeing myself on camera is already like painful, but first season was hard. Second season, when things like I know, I'll, it's a hard episode or people coming for me. If I, do, I feel like, you know, it wasn't told in the way that I would have my experience, then I actually skipped some of those episodes. And um, do you skip social media too? Do you stay off? Yeah. So actually the hard episodes when I was in Mexico, when my conflict with Sutton, that was really hard because we were really trying to get to a good place. That was challenging for me. Um, we happened to be in Europe on our family vacation. So it made it a lot easier because time zone and like, so I just sort of stayed off in general. Um, you know, you get forced to see those clips because you get tagged all the time, but I actually didn't watch about three episodes in a row. And that was and I, you know, the producers will tell me because I call them and I said, tell me, like, just prepare me. I don't I never ask to edit. I never ask to adjust. I just know that that's not like appropriate. Like, I know what I'm signing up for, but I do want to know, like, just give me a heads up. Like, what are the ones I'm going to want to avoid? And they're respectful of that. So they're like episodes, blah, blah, blah. You're not, you know, it's hard on you. I'm like, OK, so I just avoid those ones. Have you ever had a Bravo, Bravo, effing Bravo moment yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> no no um, i might okay. i don't know i i, no, I hope i hope I'm one day you are i'm a student you know i mean like i'm always like i know these are the, like i'm supposed to do this as, it's a job and i'm allowed to do that so i just always follow the rules um like to a t which i don't know if that's a good thing but uh no i mean like that's what i'm saying you get rewarded for breaking the rules it's like the weirdest thing um I ask this of a lot of housewives that I speak to, but especially with you, you talk about being pre-med. We see that you have truly this amazing family that like, by the way, I completely buy that. Those are your real kids. Those are not actors. Those are your real, like you have this, what I think of like, Oh, that seems so nice. Like I like Rob's whole style. And I like that. He seems like fairly positive And like, I like these things, you know, and I'm like, why did you do this show? Was it because of representation? Was it because of I want to sell more coconut water? What what were your what was your reasoning for the show? It was a combination of all those things and more. Um, when I first got the call, it was actually like March, end of March, 2020, and so it was lockdown had just happened. It was about two weeks after lockdown. Um, my brother was supposed to get married in China that week. It was like a very intense week. And I got this call um, and I immediately was like, no, like not interested. <laughs> and I remember, I mean, this is like the real story of how it happened. And I told Rob, I was like, I got a call. And he was like, oh, and I was like, I'm not a housewife. Like that's makes no sense. I'm, I wear sweats all day long. And he's like, you know, you like the show. Cause I watched the show. And he's like, you like the show, you should just take the call so you can sort of get insider of how it works, you know, because he doesn't work in reality. So it was more yeah. of like, just enjoy the ride of the phone calls and you literally in lockdown, you have nothing to do. So I was like, okay. So then I took a call and we, I would talk to like a casting person and then they're like, oh, we, I love you. Like, let's do a call next week. And I'm like, and I would tell Rob like, oh, I need to tell her I'm not going to do it. He's like, you're not going to get it. Just keep taking the calls. Like you're never going to get the show. Like, do you know how hard it is to get casted? I was like, or, that's not a word. How hard is it? <laughs> and by the way, Rob, what a support of, you'll never get it by the way, Christy. Chris, you're never going to get it. So why yeah, don't you just you take suck. the call? suck, yeah. <laughs> Our life sucks. And I was like, he's like, you know, you're not, he's like, he's like, it's so hard, these shows. And like, you're, you're just, yeah, I'm not like your typical, you know, whatever. So it just kept going on. And when I tell you, it went on for seven months. It was a long time of just every month getting a call. 
And so as we got closer, it got more, our conversations got more intense. And this was at the peak of BLM and anti-Asian hate crimes. And yeah. so it's like, gosh, and I remember my mom called me and, and then she begged me not to do it because she was lost. She locked herself, um, her and Marshall locked themselves in their house for like two months when people were attacking um, Asian people. And she's like, they're going to, people are going to try to come kill you. It makes me want to cry. People want to kill you. And she was so afraid. Um, and I was like, it's okay, mom. And I remember internally thinking, I was like, I'm afraid, but I don't want my mom to feel afraid. Yeah. But, yeah. So it was like, I just had a lot of conversations with my friends, my family of like, what did that mean? Real Coco was doing very well in um, COVID. Uh, we expanded 500%. People were hoarding food. So like we, our company really got. A yeah, lot it's weird. Hurt. The things that actually succeeded during it. it's like things like that. And then streaming services like shows yeah. like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills did amazing. Exactly. Um, so there was just so many reasons. And then at the end of the day, um, it was really me and Rob and the kids. And we just said, okay. Do your parents watch the show? Um, my dad passed, but my, Marshall, I'm my sorry. Mom yes, watched. of course. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. She... Um, and they watch, and my mom watches like YouTube stuff about me. Like, oh, oh no, God. I was no. like, I don't even know what YouTube is, mom. First of all, oh like, my God. I know. Oh, no. It's horrible. Well, my mom, my mom keeps track of my Instagram stats and she, she likes every post. She has no idea of the shows. I made her watch like an episode of Beverly Hills and one of Vanderpump rules doesn't get it, but she likes everything. And she'll be like, you didn't have a good week on Instagram this week. Yeah. Your numbers didn't go up at all. And I'll be like, mom, I thank you. I know that's ridiculous. Um, but is she proud of you now, even like yeah. now coming out of this of like, wow, I'm so glad you did do this. And we've got to see uh, Asian representation. I loved the, I think it was the season finale of your first season when you had that. I mean, there were so many really cool moments and I want for so many more, more cool moments to happen. And I'm glad that you are still open because my thought was, I'm scared you're going to be like, I don't need this. I don't need the hassle or the headache. Cause that's my thing is like, why did you do that? You're so damn smart. You've got this beautiful thing. Why? Like, I'm I keep not that smart. Like, this is proof. <laughs> <That's it. Yeah. laughs> this By is the way, true. I got her on the show. You guys No, No, um, but you know, that, that, that was my thing. I'm like, what seems like this great life? Why? Like sometimes with Kyle, even I'll be like, Kyle, why are you still doing this, man? Like Mauricio has got the agent. Like what? I mean, are you, are you addicted to fame at this point? Like what? And I don't get that vibe from you. Um, so it just was one of those things, but I'm glad that you are considering, or you will consider still coming back on. I will say, I don't think that I'm going to be a career housewife, you know, where some girls, what, on. <laughs> what, what do you mean a career housewife? <laughs> you know, there's one in that, like, it's the, like the show is their primary career. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's and they need not, it very I don't, badly. That's yeah. not going to be me. And I can say that very clearly. I, um, I do feel like I have more story to tell. And, um, you know, I, I think the last few years of the Asian representation on Bravo has not been good and disappointing. And, or my friend, Tiffany, who showed up. I love Tiffany. Moo. Yeah. She, she was yeah. my favorite part of that last season of Dallas. And I've, I've been able to speak with her and we were talking about, and there was another one. I'm like, you're an anesthesiologist. You, I mean, like you are, this is the, anybody's dream, even aside from TV is like certain aspects of how hard you've worked, but yeah, like I was trying to explain. But I totally understand why she did the show too, because I come from a family of doctors and um, she was like, is this it for me? And even though it feels like to other people, it might be everything. It's like an opportunity like this comes up and I'm like, well, we have a great life. We're happy. And the one thing I know being on this side of it, people are like, oh, it's going to ruin your marriage. I don't believe that. If you want your marriage ruined, it was already ruined. Like you're there yeah, yes. to like set up your next part of your life no like there's there is that theory of like the housewives some housewives go on just to get divorced and by the way that's like dispelled immediately when you see rob on the show like there's never been a time where i'm in fact i would love to talk to rob at some point just to see what his take on having a conversation with pk and mauricio because they're always like hey buddy we're going out and like rob's always there and like he's dancing but i just wonder like from his perspective what that's like uh, on a, a you should talk to member. him but on a basic um, yeah he's on a basic thing, he always says they're so nice to him. And they're like, they're, they always like very welcoming to Rob. Like, no, no, they're, they're never mean, but I just feel like it's so odd. Uh, like it's such a it's, weird it is. <laughs> environment. And especially for somebody who's moved the needle in his own way, in so many ways. Is it true your first date was Finding Nemo? Mm -hmm. Really? He so took we, we met on a Saturday night and then and that premiere was on that next weekend. 
And so Dude, that, what an yeah, and you can't say no to a Finding Nemo premiere. No, like, that's I'd never like, been to a premiere either. And I'm from LA. And like a car service picked me up. I was like, wow, this guy <laughs> is like fancy. <laughs> Fancy. Was there, I mean, do, was it love at first sight for you guys? Was there a gradual, and and what does it mean like watching you guys have built this beautiful family, you've built a life together. Um, is it one of those things that you actually do stop and appreciate now? Or you're like, oh my God, look at what we've done in the time period that we've been together. We, we stop and pinch ourselves all the time. We really do. I mean, when I met Rob, he was already very successful. And, um, but for me, I, I wasn't, I was impressed by his, um, humility, you know, he's like a, he's just like an animator from Northern California at his core that just has like an, a passion for filmmaking. And I, for me, it was like my family's so close. I mean, we're like, we have a very strong Chinese family. And I, my mom was like, I don't care about any of what he does. If he like gets our family and like shows up every weekend for your grandparents, all that, like he's good. And that's what happened. Um, and so he's, he's been like that ever since, but you know, he's just like a really like good person. At, you know, at he's any, he, he, the camera by some weird alchemy always picks up, you know, that's why I think it's so magical sometimes is because even if like somebody or I'll use Rena, you know, like I can tell, like the, the camera picks up like behind the eyes, the thoughts, you know, like you can say one thing, but the camera will pick up what you're actually thinking. And with him, it's just always like a no brainer for me. And also I love that your brother, Jeffrey is always around and it just shows another thing. He seems very welcoming. Was there ever talk of a duet between Jeffrey and Asher at all at any point in the season? <laughs> there was. There were Yes, we got the exclusive. What happened? There what, was. The, the we are the world. We are the Beverly Hills could have happened. What happened? Um, it just was, it was just too much. Like it's, <laughs> it was too much, you know? I mean, like my brother <laughs> is also as like Rob is, you know, a director and he, his films are out. My brother, my brother won MTV best new artist Asian yeah. album, you know, but like at the, at, at the other end of us, like we're all very humble. Like we don't want to like tutor on, you know? So I'm like, my, brother, my, I was like to my brother, like, why don't you do something on the show? He's like, ah, I don't know. Like, I don't need to do that. Um, so I would love it, but at the same time, maybe like down the road, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's, we're not like show offy, which is uh, ironic. No, you are, you, if I, but that's, I don't In know. fact, I was, I was, but I, I, I know I just have five more minutes with you. So I'm going to wrap this up, but that's what I even love about your basement renovation was that you were like, we are on budget no matter what, like, and that's just not sometimes the reality of these other ladies where they want to portray this it's like, I've got $80 billion diamond earrings and I've got this. And you see that sometimes that is later down the road. It doesn't prove to be fruitful in other ways. Um, uh, some moments, uh, you were one of the first people to teach me the value of purses. I had never, I'm a straight dude, unfortunately. And I never knew because like you brought that purse out that looked like an advent calendar that first season. <laughs> and I was like, why? And, there, and then Kyle was like all salivating. And I didn't realize that purses were like something to collect and that gain value. I yeah. didn't realize not, that not until all you- purses. Uh, not all purses, but no, I went to a Ross dress for less and I bought a hundred purses and none of them are worth anything. Cause By I, the way, I, I, was investing. I would say half of Zoe's closet is from Ross. She loves <laughs> Ross. Like she wears like those BB sandals for seven 99. I would yeah. say majority of my clothes are like TJ Maxx. Like we're, I'm a Maxinista. You're a Maxinista. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Uh, did for you sure. feel like you unfairly got told you were wearing a baby doll dress too much in the season? Like I was like, I loved it's, it. a ba it's a baby doll dress. Get over it. Like everybody. And how did you get a kick out of when you said it was the last uh, <laughs> with your age at your birthday party? Was it? I mean, you got a kick out of the reaction shots, didn't you? Yeah. Of the other they were ladies? all silent or like, <laughs> <I think> Erica, <laughs> like Erica was like, fuck you. And I was like, <laughs> but it was funny the way they cut it. It was like the, the like, Silent. Oh no, it was like I love all the editors sometimes when yeah, they troll right. in a certain way. Um, okay, so uh are you on a group text thread with uh the housewives right now? Did there used to be one? Is it completely in separate forces right now? Where are you with everybody? So I will say the last two years it's been the same. I've always um someone always starts it the day we start filming. Um and and then there's always one person, I'm not gonna say who, who leaves it the day we stop filming. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same person. And in terms of the other group text, I've never been on another one. But but we do know there is another one because yeah, of the reunion. But I've okay. never, I'm not in that one. 
But you know what I like is that you're not trying to prove anything to anybody. I never get the sense of like, sometimes I get worried with Sutton because sometimes I feel like she'll let Erica Jane in when I'm like, don't do it. Don't invite her over for Popeye's at your house. Don't do that. And I know it's just a show, but I get very protective of people like Sutton and you and, and Garcelle. Um, and then- uh, hey, We have to remember though, you can't, it wouldn't make sense if we filmed a whole season separated. Exactly. Nobody would want to see that either. Yeah. So as I, I get that. And that's the angst that like you want the, you know, to feel like, I think that's what makes it interesting, but like the show is about resolve too, you know, and I tend to be someone that always looks like gives people the benefit of the doubt. Um, and I hope people do that for me, but I get what you mean. It's like, you're protective of the, like, the, the girls, the characters you love and you, yeah, you know. I mean, but that's, it, it's, it's like pro wrestling or like, you're like, yeah. you have your favorites. And by the way, my favorites could, you might be a villain three seasons from now. I, like, I don't know. Like we have not seen you fully explode. Um, and then, uh, oh, I can't. There- Ask Rob. Rob is like, you <laughs> treat these women so nicely. By the way, I want <laughs> Rob to like secretly videotape you like Rinna should have done with Kathy. Like he should oh. do that and then give it to the show. I will get I will get canceled. I will um, my okay, kids will be so, for me. <laughs> uh, do you believe that there is hope that all you ladies because like, this was such a contentious season and I want to live leave on a positive note? Do you see like I mean, they were saying like, oh, we're not going to start filming until January now, potentially. And it just seems like a lot of rumors up in the air. Do you feel like you guys can all get back to a place where you can be in the same room, including Miss Kathy Hilton, who I know you're actually truly friends with, you know, you said, and she has become such a fan favorite, which is really funny in so many ways. Do you feel like you're able to get back in the room with all of these ladies? Yes, I do. Because I I talk to many privately and um not that all of them have said, like, I am ready to move forward, but I feel like there is a sense that that's possible. And, uh, okay. And, and, and we're not going to, but just, I would say everybody go look at social media, everybody, you can go on there and see who follows everybody and who follows, who doesn't follow anybody. But, but by the way, but I will say like, doesn't that part of it get disappointing or as an adult, do we have to understand even away from TV shows that there's always going to be a high school mentality in life where isn't it just silly that we're at a certain age and people still follow and unfollow people on Instagram as a warning or a sign of hurt? Yes. I mean, I feel it's, it's disappointing. And, um, especially when they're older, like I, I, yeah. I think that's a game that I'm not interested in playing. I follow everyone on the show and, um, and if they don't follow me, that's fine. Like, I don't, I don't know. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fine. I just sometimes feel like how silly is this? And especially even silly. like we, even I feel silly at times doing what I do. And then, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, this is the same feelings I had in high school when I was like told I would, you know, like just that bullying kind of effect that I feel like so weird. But anyways, uh, I know we only had 30 minutes. Crystal, this has been so, so, I've been dreaming about this interview for a very long time. Thank you for doing this. I truly thought you hated me. So this is just, that, that shows what a narcissist I am. Please put a good word in not for something. always Sutton. about you, Ryan. I know, I know. Ryan, cut that out. That's not a good part to leave in. I'm joking. Um, is there anything that we need to know for the off season for you to support you besides the, the beverage? I'm going to put the links to the website for that. You can find it in every Costco except for Texas. Do we have an album coming out? What do we have? Oh, I want to tell you. Okay. I got a trailer today of something I was in. I haven't been able to say it. So I think it's out now. Um, there's a new um okay so first you should go see rob's movie it's streaming on paramount plus called pause of fury it's great okay. pause and of fury. then second uh the trailer came out today i'm in the new zootopia which is on uh, oh that's yeah, awesome on i Disney do an, plus. i do it a kid show tomorrow or something i'm in episode two Okay, that and it's uh, so that's we got to support her voice work career as well. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. And finally, would you do an ultimate girls trip if you were asked? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the location. Uh, yeah, and I think I know this sounds horrible. Like, if I have to wear a bathing suit, <laughs> dude, I have not been able to take off my shirt. I I wear a shirt in the shower, you guys. Yeah, like, I, <laughs> I'm like, there's no, there's no part of like I hate like BravoCon. That was the only part, just like because of the photos that I had to take. With, like, you were like, oh my god, you're gonna take a photo of me without makeup, and I'm like, look at me, Crystal. Are you you're insane? Not- People were like, she, and I was like, she's naturally gorgeous and all this stuff, and I'm like, god. and look at me. Any, anyways. Uh, but it's Crystal hard Cutterman because though. everyone, I, you know, like there's so much, not just my show, but like just people on TV, 
they filter, you know, and they, and it has, they all have the Wait, same are you, look. People use filters? What are you talking about? Are people use <laughs> I mean, face Their lashes filters? are huge and their lips are huge. Like, I don't even like get facials. Like, I don't. So I'm like, oh, oh, you God. don't even get facials? No. Really? I, I know. No, but I mean, no, I'm not saying this in a kiss assy way, but you do look like you get a, a facial. You know, you do look very cleansed on your, I I'm don't clean. know. I'm a, I wash my face. Are you one of those housewives that shower? Is that is that what you're saying? Like you know, if it hits me sometimes, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, okay, well, I could. I have a thousand more questions, so hopefully one day you'll come back. Uh, but truly, uh, great work this season. I uh, wish I had heard more of your story, and that's why I try to talk about that story on this podcast, which you guys have heard. Uh, but I'm a huge fan, and I really, really want you on next season. So I hope everything works out, and uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.